So I would like to keep this board flat. Uh, this is the programmer for the microcontroller. And it would go on just like this. But that does add a lot of height, so it's possible I'll have to try it. Uh, I may be able to just hold the board like this and then apply uh, some down pressure on the connector that will make all of the pins touch. Now, I don't totally love this idea because if any of them disconnect, then it would interrupt flashing the program and depending on when you do that, it could be pretty bad. So it definitely would be safer to solder it straight to the board, but that does add a lot of height. So in theory, I could solder the header pins on, program the chip, and then remove them. Um, but in practice, it's not very easy at all to remove anything that's got more than two pins because you're constantly jumping around with the iron trying to keep them all warm. It doesn't really work. You could also use a heat gun to remove it, but then you do risk uh, the other pins dropping out and also melting. So it's not, it probably will not be very practical for me to solder and remove this header pin. So I think what I'll do when I program this is I'll hook it up to the software and I'll just ask the software to try to read the chip information. And if it's able to talk to the chip, I'll try it a couple times. And if it can consistently talk to the chip while I'm applying pressure, then I'll feel pretty confident that there won't be an issue during write. So the program commonly used for loading firmware onto AVR microcontrollers is called AVR Dude. Uh, it's just a console program, which means you have to type all the commands out yourself. And the other thing is this, of course, matters which way you hook it up. There's a little extra line in the corner of this jumper or this uh, header and there's also a red wire which indicates pin one is on this side and the little rib on uh, this side of the connector indicates that pin one is on this side of the connector. So pin one is in this corner and we line that up with the mark. And so that's also pin one is a square and all the rest are round pads. So there's, yeah, there's a couple ways. So I'm just gonna apply some decent pressure on this and I'm gonna tell AVR dude the controller type or the programmer, which is called a USB tiny. And the part is an at tiny 85. And it's not gonna write any settings. It's just gonna try to talk to it. And it says, Device signature zero at or hexadecimal one E nine three zero B probably a tiny eighty five, which is good because that's exactly what it is. And it says that the fuses are okay. So in other words, it worked. Uh, it absolutely worked. So I'll, I'll just try a couple more times. Maybe vary the pressure in my hand and see what is required to make it break. or force it to break. There we go. So it, it seems like it doesn't actually take a lot of pressure to get it to successfully talk to the chip, which is good because that means I can, um, that means it's most likely going to work. So I'm feeling pretty confident about this. Uh, Arduino, the IDE, their software is practically amazing uh, in the way that you can pull in so many different types of chips and program them all using the same software. So here's an open source at tiny core. Um, it's a, well, it's just a, uh, it's called a core, which means it contains all of the uh, implementations of all the Arduino functions for a specific chipset, which in this case is the Atmel at tiny uh, AVR microcontrollers which is what the at tiny 85 on this board is. So even though Arduino was not ever invented with the purpose of programming these chips, uh, we can today because 
they have all these different libraries and um, their different ports, I guess. So this is the one that I installed on Arduino. So now I can come down here to board and set it to a tiny 25 slash 45 slash 85. Looks like there's also a version with Optiboot, which is, okay, so a bootloader is a special program that runs on the chip and actually the bootloader runs every time the chip is reset. It's the very first thing that turns on. It's kind of like the loading screen on your uh, PC, but the bootloader um, will make it so that you can upload a program without needing to have a programmer. You can just have a USB to uh, UART or um, a serial, a USB to serial converter, and the chip will, um, it does the programming. It's just like a self programming. Uh, it, it's really cool, but it'll allow you to make uh, future updates to the firmware of Breeze. So we'll skip that for now. Uh, we just want to make sure it works. We'll play around with Octoboot maybe later. There are several settings. So first of all, make sure the chip is what you want. I have an Atiny 85. The other ones are very similar on the inside as far as how they're designed, but the Atiny 85 costs the most, but it also has the most like RAM and resources. Uh, we, we are going to use an internal clock. I have on this board the ability to add a time crystal or a resonator um, in case I want to do stuff that really requires a solid um, exact frequency. But for now, um, and since I don't have any of the time crystals, I'll just tell it to use a built-in internal resonator, which will be pretty good. Um, we're not gonna, the brownout detector, um, what this does is if the supply voltage of the chip, which is nominally five volts, if it drops below a certain threshold, then the brownout detector will just shut the chip off. And this actually can be a good thing because whenever the voltage of the chip starts getting below the, uh, the operating range, you can imagine certain systems on the chip may start functioning strange and weird things can happen. And so it's better just to turn the chip off completely before it gets to that dangerous level. So well, I'll, I'll just leave that disabled for now. And then there's an option to wipe the EEPROM every time you upload, which I would like to have it keep the EEPROM data. And then the timer one, I guess they're just giving you more options. You set it to the default. And I actually do not know what LTO is, so I will disable it. And then I'll leave it to the default. Now, uh, those are the chip options. We can go to the programmer, and I have the USB Tiny ISP selected, which is, that's what this thing is. Did it say that on here? Oh, uh, I don't think it says that on here, but <laughs> that's what it is. And actually, that should be it. Sketch, upload using programmer. So you, if you upload, it's expecting that you have a chip that already has the bootloader on it, and it's gonna use, it's gonna upload using the bootloader. However, this is the first time we're programming it. The brand new chip doesn't have a bootloader, uh, so we are going to upload using a dedicated programmer. So again, I will line up the red wire, the pin one with pin one, put some pressure on it and give it a go. So it'll compile the program first. And now we're uploading. You can see the right light is on. The suspense is building. The 
bright light is turned off and Arduino says it is done uploading. So, I mean, what's left to do now but power it on and test to see if it in fact works. So I designed this thing to have the layout of a standard RC servo plug, which will make it really easy to connect all kinds of things. And you, know, you can buy three pin servo plug, you know, those cables um, for pretty cheap. But for now, to test it, um, I'm just going to use a five volt phone charger with a USB cable that I have spliced and cut apart. And on the output, I will just breadboard an LED. So first what I'll do is actually hook up to the five volt pin, which I don't even have to look because it's a standard RC servo plug. I know that that is the center pin. I'll give it some juice and nothing because I recall that I did not um, hook up the ground rail. So I need one more, one more wire. So the you know, ground wires in, give it some power. All right, so all that proves is that there is five volts in this circuit. The next thing to do is move to the signal line. And this actually should not turn on because this is the output pin of the processor. So now what I need to do is turn the processor on with the potentiometer in a such a way that it would provide five volts to the input pin. Um, and that will put it into, well that should put it into a programming mode. So we'll see. Actually, that puts it into, um, let's see. Oh, wow. So the program upload was successful. So I'm pretty happy about that. I keep working on the project. Thank you for watching.